back to Code Vlogs. We're on episode 11, and we are to the point where we're, we should be nearing the end of this version. And we do have base animations in the engine now, as you can see this dude walking. Now it's not fully integrated, there's some things that also need tweaked and moved over. Like, Well, it's a lot to explain, but basically I gotta set it up with all the lighting and make sure that it's doing the lighting right as it transforms. And then I need to uh, add in the option to switch animations, blend animations, and a few other things like that. Uh, the guy's actually really tiny, he just looks big when you're up close. But I did add back in all the, the scale and move stuff too, so... It's coming along pretty good. However, I haven't actually put as much time as I would like to uh, into this in the last few days. Been a little under the weather, and I kind of got involved into studying a few other things, which I guess I'll talk about now. I was kind of brushing up on some algorithm stuff, and I came across a list of 75 leak code problems that basically every programmer should learn how to do off the top of their head, because these are problems that come up again and again in programming. And if you know how to do all 75 of these, it should help you a lot. Apparently there's actually 76. So one more got added at some point. But it, yeah, the I've went through the first few, uh, but there's still a lot more to go. So I'm trying to knock out uh, just one every once in a while, basically. And some of them I find that I kind of know the answer intuitively and others I have to really think about, but there's a lot of them to go. So that's another thing that I've been doing and studying just to make sure that uh, my skills are up to par before I continue. Cause it always, you know, it always comes back to bite you when you, when you don't study enough and you try to implement something in a naive way, you just have to spend time on it again. So it really pays off to learn ahead of time and then come back to the real problem after you've learned more. I guess that's subjective. Sometimes things just need to get done. And you don't have time to study anymore, but with your own projects with no firm deadline, you got a little bit of flex, and that's both a good and a bad thing. Another thing I've been doing is just studying Vulcan more and more and making sure I understand it, because at some point we are going to go into Vulcan, and this video has kind of given me some insight, and there's some good links in here uh, for stuff like uh, this Faster Than Life blog uh, by Dustin Hand or Dustin Land, and uh, yeah, I'm probably going to go through it at some point. I mean, I have the basics of Vulcan, but I still needed a bit of a deeper understanding of all the features and stuff you got to set up before I feel that comfortable implementing it, but it won't be too much longer. Another thing I've been doing is just reviewing some code from well-known open source projects like Doom 3 and Quake and just seeing how they do things and taking a look at their shaders and things like that. And it's, it's a lot more than I understand at the moment, but there's a lot of little insights you can get from here about how to do things and maybe what you should be doing or ways that it's been successful in the past so it's been a pretty cool experience and if you can get these to compile it's always a nice little milestone as a programmer to be able to compile doom and run it or quake and run it and it's pretty cool to see like uh the id lib where they've got all their their math stuff and there's a bunch of other libs like uh, i don't even know exactly what all these are like there's id lib and engine I was kind of trying to unpack the difference between those. Seems like id live is mostly math stuff and uh, programming algorithms and stuff like that. And it looks like the engine has the render and sound and UI and just kind of puts everything together. So I thought that was pretty interesting because the way I'm doing it in mine, I'm pretty much doing it all in one library. It looks like they separate libraries out, which in a lot of ways makes a lot of sense. Like I think Timidy is for some kind of sound. So I imagine if we go here and go to properties, or, well, I guess, uh, let's look at the references. You can see what they reference, and it looks like the engine doesn't reference any of the others. So I'm kind of trying to figure out what exactly is going on here. Doom 3 BFG uses all these libraries, you can see, including the Doom Classic one. So a lot of interesting stuff like that you can get, like always, you know, looking at other people's code. You never know where to start exactly, unless you got some sort of write-up about it. So most of the time you're just kind of poking around until you figure stuff out. And that's the kind of the way it is with this right now. But it's something I'm going to continue to come back to because I find it interesting. And I'm sure I'll learn a lot about things I'm developing as I go. So just looking at other sources I think is really important. Taking time to step back, kind of see a broader view. Because uh, when you get deep in the nitty gritty of something you've been working on for a long time, 
you tend to get tunnel vision and who knows if you're doing it correctly anymore at that point so that's why i like to dig in and, and look at other stuff it's just to make sure that i'm doing stuff in somewhat of a comprehensible way to other people and and to me because i can i can count well i can't count the number of times that i've done something in my engine and then later realized i've already i've done this like two different ways in two different places and now it's just confusing <laughs> i'm sure a lot of you have experienced that too but i'm looking forward to advancing this little engine setup and i'm really thinking about it like do i really just want one main library that does everything i kind of do i like that i, I kind of realize that it breaks the norm because usually you have like a library for your sound a library for your other thing and you know the one for everything but in this case i just have everything all piled into one and i think it's fine it doesn't seem to bring up any glaring issues other than maybe the size of it which uh, i'll address later and you know i could always split it up later if i wanted to because right now it's just different folders like there's all the sound stuff it's only in these files and it's still generally the same there's a few kinks to work out with how the scene and render are set up because there's some mix between scene and renderer. I don't know if I need to separate them out more or combine them or abstract another thing. So I'm trying to make sense of that. Like, for example, we have this model loader and the model loader essentially, you know, grabs all the vertices, the textures, well, combined with the texture loader, model loader and texture loader work together. But I need to decide whether things are automatic or more control is given. Because what if you want to load a model but you just want the vertices. You should be able to tell the model loader not to load textures. And what if you're loading an animated model? That's kind of where I'm at right now. You should be able to say, hey, I don't want the animations. I just want the mesh. Or to say, hey, I already have the mesh. I just want the animations or the bones and stuff like that. So there's a lot of just trying to make sense of the best way to do things. Once I change something else that maybe breaks an old standard I had, then that's when I change things. You know, you don't want to change things, too many things at a time. So that's yet another thing I'm really focusing on. And that's the last thing I'm going to get into in this particular blog. And that relates to version control and isolating the things you're working on and problems you're working on. Because I don't know about you, but for me as a solo dev, I am so scatterbrained when I work on this. Like I can't even express it <laughs> so it's something i have to work on it's to summarize when i go to work on something say hey i want to improve these animations specifically these animations i start digging into files and i start seeing stuff that i don't like and i start changing things i start making comments i start uh, you know doing stuff that has nothing to do with animations and then at some point I have to like stop myself and be like, what are you doing? Work on animations only. You're just making this way more confusing and difficult for yourself when you're tweaking other things, because then when I go to like commit my changes, I've got all these changes that have nothing to do with the animations I've been working on. And I'm just like, uh, this is making it so I'm on the, literally on the skeletal animation branch and here I am like tweaking the rendering and stuff. Now it's fine if I'm tweaking the rendering to work with the animations or something like that. But if I'm just like poking around doing random stuff, that's an issue. Now I will say it's only an issue when I'm specifically trying to work on one thing. If I'm trying to think how to best explain this, you guys probably get the point. But basically I'm learning to really like set us when I'm setting aside time to program to just really focus on the thing I actually want to get done. Like if I say, all right, it's time to get the uh, animations, something about them sorted out. I've got a couple hours and let's see if I can get this part complete and maybe start on the next part if I have time. But then when I start actually going in there, if I start poking around and doing other things like fixing syntax or whatever, it just messes up my whole flow. And then I have commits in here that have nothing to do with anim animations and that's just one example that goes for every feature i go to add that's just something i'm learning to compartmentalize better this is i find that this is hard specifically on solo dev projects now i've worked on teams before and it was way easier to compartmentalize when you're on a team because when you're on a team there's an understanding of you don't want to touch other things because other people might be working on it when you're working on your own solo project, it feels like it doesn't matter. I'm the only one working on it. It doesn't matter really what I change. No one's going to be affected. But that's not entirely true. 
because I'm affected and it messes up my flow. Alright, well thanks for watching. Peace out guys.